And that was... It was a house show, and it was to support uh, cancer for kids. Not to, to, to help support the fight for cancer for kids. <laughs> yes. Cancer for kids. Not a fan. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Stand Up To Cancer. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are a uh, fairly new band, but they have been making big waves on the local scene. And they have an upcoming show December 8th at Cemetery Pulp, this cool oddities macabre kind of place. So make sure that you, you know, check it out. Their music is tinged with Emo, alternative, rock, a little bit of pop in there. So stick around. We're going to be seeing a couple performances upstairs in room six from them, and you can judge for yourself. Drop a comment what you think. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. And also down in the description will be uh, social media links to them, etc. Please welcome to the channel. Maybe you're right. Say hi, guys. Wow. Never got applause for the intro before. That's not true. Keep up. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, good night. No, just kidding. All right, we're maybe you're right, and we're Alcoholic Anonymous. <laughs> Anonymous? Anonymous. Uh, uh, Apocalypse. <laughs> Alco There's a band name, Alcoholics Apocalypse. So, for those of you that don't know who maybe you're right is, thank you very much for watching. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell them what you do in the band. Hi, I'm Jared Summers. Uh, I'm the lead singer, and I'm one of the guitarists. I'm Charlene. I play bass. I'm Lena. I'm the real drummer. I'm Hawk. I'm the other guitarist. And I'm Josh. I'm the fake drummer. Mm. <laughs> I'm not a drummer, but I played one on the internet. So, <laughs> seriously though, if you want to be interviewed or re have me review your music or whatever, be featured on Room 6, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. And uh, that'll also tell you where, what else I'm doing online, where you can support the channel, all good things. Um, yeah, so, uh, some of these questions may be familiar to some of you, and I appreciate you watching, so strap in, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one, we met at Eagles Airy Hall, and apparently it is pronounced Eagles Airy Hall, because it's a fraternal order of eagles, oh. but everybody who advertises it... I... Hmm? Oh, I remember last time I was there, it was weird, because it kind of seemed like cultish. Oh, it's totally... <laughs> It's no more cultish than, you know, the Shriners or something. All music is cultist. <laughs> but I met them at a show where also two other Room 6 alumni were uh, co kind of co-headlining, but Dante's were the headliners, and before them was Paper Dads. The whole show was amazing, though. I, I did a review of it. Thumbnail here. And <laughs> Go watch it. It's pretty cool. Thanks. But uh, it was a cool show, and I really enjoyed the whole vibe of the night. So... So I'm going to ask a question that I apologize if it's a repeat. <laughs> we certainly have not uh, done this already once before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not at all. Never. First time. Yes, first yeah, time. Okay. I'm, Who are you? I'm a professional. <laughs> yes, welcome to my home. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> that was the question, though. No. Let's, um, let's go ahead and talk about earliest musical influences. As in, what is that moment you remember thinking, I want to do that? Yo, okay. Yo. So, for me, it was like the Nickelodeon show. It's like an old one, like mid two thousands. Mm -hmm. It's called the Naked Brothers Band, and it had uh, starred Nat and Alex Wolf, who were like real brothers, and they did real music. And but they're not really naked. And they're not, but they're brothers. But they're real brothers. And then like uh, Alex Wolf, like you might have seen him if you've seen the new Jumanji movie with The Rock. His character is like the person that turns into The Rock's character. So that's pretty cool. And like, I just thought it was really interesting, like as a kid, because you know, they were kids at the time, like maybe middle schoolers. I think the drummer was maybe like fifth grade at the time. Mm -hmm. But like, again, like these are kids who are doing music, playing music. And I was like, why can't I do the same? And I was maybe like seven years old. And then I think first song on the radio I like remember listening to is like, uh, Until the Day I Die. Nice. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Surprise. Bless um, you. Thanks, it was a cough. But <laughs> a, a lot of us started out as, I could do that. Yeah. 
Next. As oh. a kid, it's like naivety. You know, you don't really know, but at the same time, it's like you know. Kids are the best to ask how to do something because they don't know what they're not, what you can't do. That's how I know I'm decent at singing. Because <laughs> I sang to them and they're like, it's not bad. And I was like, it good enough for me. Well, it doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next. Um, my earliest musical influence probably goes back to like when I was a little kid, like Disney movies, like Disney princess, all those like little musicals. And then I kind of tried to like replicate them. So like I would just break out into song in like the middle of like Disneyland or like the doctor's office or like wherever I felt like singing songs. And I guess that's like where it where it starts. Right on. And we're not gonna sing Disney music because I don't want to get you know sued into oblivion. Copyright. <laughs> How about you? Uh well. My earliest. Well, I do have a lot of inspirations, but the number one pop punk band I would ever like. Um, my favorite pop punk band would be Sum Forty One. They're the ones who inspired me very much to get into music. Uh, well, when it comes to drumming, I would look forward to like Travis Barker, Tommy Lee, and Roger Cuffley. Yo, <laughs> yeah. I love nice. when he covers "Baby" from <laughs> Justin Bieber. Excuse me. I really, uh, Roger Roger Cuffley just inspired me to just be a shitty drummer. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, let's go shit. Let's, let's go aim shit. low. <laughs> yeah. Like, drummers are up here. I'm going down here. That's my goal. <laughs> and, and if you're a fan of Roger, the opinions expressed by guests on Room 6 are... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, how about you, Hawk? Oh, um... Also, you know, scoot back a little bit this okay. way, so maybe you're in shock. You know, just an idea. Okay. So, um... I think I got a lot of inspiration from, like, watching shows so like um watching like the stroke shows uh i don't know if you've seen like the mtv it was like one dollar bill like it was one dollar to get into like one of their shows and it's kind of like a i remember those it's yeah it's a very small stage it was like and, a hodgepodge of acts or, oh yeah. no it was only one act wasn't it yeah i think so i think it was just like one band and then it, it, it was the strokes was, yeah i mean it definitely it was like a, it, it was a crazy show he like walks around mm. in the crowd you see kids mtv used to be about music yeah, is it now? About TV. Was it like cars or reality too yeah oh. yeah i said it what rob dear drake funny clips show yeah um, that's all that's on there yeah but about that so cool so from there Want to pivot? Any friends fans? Pivot. Anyway, I just dated myself. I think. Was that with like Ross and Rachel and like one yes. day? No, that was that was. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, ding ding ding. Song. There's hope for the future. <laughs> yeah. So from there, I wanted to talk about. Now, I said you're a fairly new band, but you've been doing this a couple years, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Let's talk uh, favorite show memory. As maybe you're right. What is that moment you're like, that's that's one for the books, or that went way off the rails, or that checked off a lot of my rock star, you know, wish list? I think for me, mm-hmm. it would be like the latest show that we just did at the time of the recording. And that was? <laughs> it was a house show, and it was to support uh, cancer for kids. Not to, to, to help support the fight for cancer for kids. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cancer for kids. Not a fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we right. hate cancer on kids, but, you know, it was, like, to support eliminating cancer from the kids. God. All right? But that's the show, like, I, I really enjoy the most so far, just because that's the one that we've done more performance-wise in terms of, like, doing flips and, like, tricks on the show while, like, Fli- giving you flips. Shows. Oh, yeah, we do, well, like, I typically do, like, a guitar flip around my body. Okay, guitar flips. And then I oh, flip on top of him. Actual flips. Yeah, like, actual <laughs> flips. Like, we make it a, a deal to, like... But this. Where was this at Eagles Area? Well, we didn't plan it out yet. Okay. <laughs> but... I mean, I've seen, like, the guitar, th- where you both throw a guitar at each other. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I've seen, you know, th- that, and that, by the way, yeah. Like, it's, it's hard. <clears throat> I don't think we do that, like, we throw it. I mean, like, flips. I just flip it around my body. All right, well, I... I have to be at Cemetery Pulp. Just see, well, maybe I, not in there because it's such it a seems cramped small. Race. I haven't I haven't been yet. I've been meaning to. I'm sorry. I plan on going there. I promise. But um, the owners are really nice. 
they reached out to me yeah. and like, please come out. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've been so so busy. There you go. Now but, the chance. Yeah, now, <laughs> I'm hoping. Summer eighth. So, um, anyway, it's a small small stage then. Oh yeah, it's very like so no flips. Uh, I can probably fit in a jump or two. Do but, like do the kick flip with the finger skates. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but again, like we we make it a deal to like kind of put on more than just us playing our songs for you guys. It's like giving you guys a show, something to that aesthetically like watch. Definitely, you could tell um, at least from the crowd. I could tell like okay, they're, they've they've really put some thought into this. They put effort into it. And they're not just going like like okay, here's the, let's play this song. Now we play this song. Like there's a whole or like theme. just breaks in between where it's like now it's our talking point. Right. Uh, in fact, I was I was towards the back and I happened to look to the stage. And I'm like, where'd they go? And they had to, they did like a sit in. They just all sat down and played uh, basically a cappella almost. Right. Just an acoustic song that we had. Yeah, but it was so it was so cool because this the whole vibe changed. The whole night, and then you got back up and finished your set. But it was one of those, okay, what do you remember from that night? And that's one of those things you remember from that night. Yeah, I think uh, also, it's like, any time we do, we, well, it's like part of our, our set. It's part of the songs that we've written. But, like, any time we pull out the acoustic set, the crowd is always, like, doing something different to, like, be engaged as part of the show. Like, the first time mm -hmm. uh, at Eagles Airy Hall, like, people were clapping hands to the beat on their own mm -hmm. we didn't like clap our hands like oh yeah clap your hands like to the beat of the song like this is the moment and so no they did that on their own on like the finale of the chorus it was awesome and then like our next show uh they were pulling out their phones as flashlights and doing it and then at the house show same deal they all like instead of like standing up and watching me sit down because it's, oh, it's a house yeah that's like, awesome the crowd like sat down with me and, you know, I don't know if that would have worked at the Eagles area. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But all right, everybody, we know you've been standing. Go ahead and sit down, and then you have to get back up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right on. But again, like that's why I think, uh, in terms of like show memories, best one. And we'll right on. Put Anybody on a show else? for you guys. Anybody else? Um, well, I'd have to say the same show, but for also just the energy from the crowd, I feel like that really made it what it was. The crowd was. Like, all of our shows, the crowd was, like, insane. But the last one, they were just really, um... What is really Chris there Angel? for us. Mind <laughs> um, free. And just, like, being able to do something for a good cause. Um, it was, like, the people that organized it, they were so nice. Everyone just, like, wanted to be there. And it really showed. And it really made a difference. Right on. House shows can definitely uh, just go crazy with the energy and then to have a to everybody there knows that it's for a good reason you know got to support that childhood cancer yes <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody got to have it at least once i think my favorite uh, memory would be like our first show at eagle harry hall I've always wanted to perform in front of people and i think that was like off my bucket list so now i can die um happily right and, and you know I really liked the show, you know, it just, it just really made me happy, even though it kind of sucked ass, but then again, my <laughs> hero is Roger Kathleen, so. <laughs> and you never forget, like, the first time performing in front of people. No. Any applause you get from that is just like a drug, and you're just like, yeah, hey, I, maybe I should, maybe I can do this. Yeah. Why not? Right. And then you look back at videos, and you try to, like, and you're like. Oh, don't do that. Oh. that you feel humble. There are two, yeah. Humbled. Well, <laughs> if you're in the right headspace, you're like, okay, I need to learn and grow. I'm going to watch old videos of me. Trust me, as a YouTuber, trust me. The things have changed over the last four and a half years. But also, as a, as a musician, just going back and listening or watching yourself, you're like, why didn't anybody tell me? <laughs> it's worse because you know when you mess up. Other people don't. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I, I did an interview earlier today at time of recording, and we were talking about that, how no matter how bad you think you messed up, somebody in the crowd is going to say, hey, great set. And you, you have two choices. You can be like, no, but see, what happened was, or you can be like, thank you, and just believe it. That's what, literally what I told them after our first show at Eagles Air Hall, and we're, we're there for the rest of the night. I was like, they say we did a good job, just accept mm -hmm. it, because they don't know. Yeah. There's a, a whole different set of uh, criteria between musicians liking what you do and fans of music liking what you do. And yes, musicians are generally fans of music, too, but they they know you know, especially if it's if you know the like if you've heard their music over and over and you hear something, I love I love being the guy in the crowd. I just point at like the drummer or whatever. Like, ah, I caught I I got that. 
Drummer. Notice how he said drummer. <laughs> well, okay. I went to a personal memory. That sorry. Remember, I'm the fake drummer. I have this um, quote saying that the drummer, the drummer can never mess up. Uh huh. Um, the drummer for the police. You you know the police? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, Karma, police. No, right. Everybody Sting, really. police. Everybody. Message in a bottle. Oh. Don't stand so close to me. Message in a bottle. That was in X Men. Roxanne. Roxanne. Okay, I Isn't know Roxanne. Every, every yeah. Break, I, so every break, every the person. band, the police, uh, the drummer said, "Just remember, if you mess up, Claire at the bass player. <laughs> Everybody will think it's his fault." So there you go. You. You messed up. I mess up. Um, I don't mess up. You mess oh. up. <laughs> I just look over at him whenever I mess up. Uh, play, play, <laughs> play your, your, your favorite. Memory? Oh, um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Uh, probably the most recent one, because um, I mean I played shows before, but like that was like for an actual cause. It wasn't like just walking in and playing music to people. Well, that's yeah. a cause too. You're growing the brand. You're, you know, making people happy. Yeah, yeah. but it's more it's like a. I I can think. <laughs> I think it's. You want me it's, a Yeah. <laughs> it's more of like not really. Only for yourself or whatever. Yeah, well, I think we, we made it a point too. I think like the day of we like recorded like a video to post on Instagram. Uh -huh. Like on our story, it was like, hey, we're performing for this cause. You should come out not only just to see us, but like if you come to the show, right? It's to support the cause, not just because you're there to see us. Is what I mean. Right like, on. You're, you're there to like rock out and support kids. And speaking of a cause. Normally, uh, right about now, I say, we're going to hear a message from future Josh, and I throw it to a sponsor spot, and I don't know which one it's going to be. But because of this, we're, we're going to hear a sponsor spot from me talking about Stand Up to Cancer. It's an amazing organization. So stick around for that, and we'll see you right after that. To the future. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. Generally, I'm an easygoing guy with love for most people and things. But you know what I really hate? Fucking cancer. Like many of you, it's affected my family too, and it really needs to go. In fact, there will be 5,200 people diagnosed with cancer today alone. That's why I'm partnering with Stand Up To Cancer. Stand Up To Cancer funds and develops the newest and most promising cancer treatments to help patients today. They dramatically accelerate the rate of new discoveries by connecting top scientists in unprecedented collaborations to create breakthroughs. Their innovations lead to better cancer preventions, diagnoses, and treatment, which means that we can help save lives now. They're committed to funding ambitious and robust research and awareness efforts focused on incorporating health equity in cancer care for the benefit of all patients facing cancer. The best part, 100% of your donations supports Stand Up to Cancer and its collaborative cancer research programs. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your first order when you sign up for email. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel and the cancer fight. Thanks to Stand Up For Cancer for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and I hope that that sponsor spot interests you. It's a great cause. Definitely click the link down in the description. Pick up some merch from them, and that'll help you. It'll help kids fighting, or it'll help people fighting cancer, and it'll help out the channel. Win, 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 win. Um, moving on. So we talked about favorite show memories. We talked about earliest musical influence. I wanted to talk about gear. Yo. Whoa. Yes, the drummer's eyes always light up. A bunch of gear whores. And so, we're not going to go into, tell me everything you own. But what do you rock at a show? Right. If someone says, how do I sound like you? What, what is it that you rock at a show? And if you have any sponsorships, by all means. I'm not going first. I go first too many times. Let's talk about the drummer and get that out of the way. <laughs> How many drum sets do you have and which one is in your living room? <laughs> he knows. He uh, knows. Uh, okay, well. Um, I know some people. <laughs> well, I do have two different drum sets. Mm -hmm. One uh, in my room, which I get to practice in. With a pink bra on it. <laughs> <laughs> the second one I actually do have in my living room. But I get, but it's just I, easier to to, off, to load it off, man. Load it out. Um, exactly. Is that the one you rock at shows? Uh, well, the first time I rocked at Area Hall uh, was the one that was up in my room. Okay. So it was kind of hard to bring it all down and bring it back up. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to invest in another drum set. 
And so I brought I bought another drum set that's on. It's in my living room. There you go. Right now, re- like minding its own business. Minding its own business. And um, waiting for uh, me to abuse it. <laughs> and I only use it when it comes to me, you know, just having to go into shows and whatever. And I also recently like also bought, you know, a snare as well. The one thing I do need to buy is a hi hat. I was just about to say, did you get a hi hat? <laughs> <laughs> only half. Only half the hi hat. Just got the high. Hey, you have a high <laughs> no hat. Please donate to me a high hat. Stan. <laughs> Stan. <laughs> I wish I had a show guitar. <laughs> well, what do you rock at a show? Um, the same stuff give I us, use at home. Give us teats, <laughs> man. I want, like, string gauges or, you know, <laughs> pedals. Or... Um, Your guitar is so weird. Yeah. It's like two different colors it's like every night. Purple and green and blue at the same it's like, time. Oh, it's got a chameleon guitar. It huh? does. Yeah, kind of like chameleon. I, I don't even know what the effect is called, but... Uh, Prismatic. I, there we go. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of like you're that. welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, so you're you're going you're playing a show. What do you have? Um, just guitar and amp. I guess I don't really use pedals that much because really, uh, yeah. The the guitar I, or the amp I have it has like um, chorus reverb. Right on. It's different channels you can. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I mean, personally, I like the pedals and I like having. Each separate pedals. I don't like that. Do the tap dance to yeah. find number forty-eight patch or whatever. Mm. But I mean, if you can make it nice and easy, especially where you have like fifteen minutes to get everything off stage or on stage. Uh, so, what kind of guitar is it? Um, it's like a. It's a signature of some uh, some person. I don't even know who, who it is. <laughs> signature of Pac. No, it, well, it, it like has like a signature on the headstock, but it's supposed to be someone I don't know. But. It's Roger's guitar. <laughs> yeah, it's some random dude. Some random All right, and, uh, some amp- random signature. Um, it's a Roland Cube. Oh, nice. 30, I think. And I heard recently that it was like the Cure practice amp. I believe that it, it has that kind of bottom that they like bottom end. Yeah. And normally, I when I see a Roland amp, it's um, for bass. You know, but <clears throat> they certainly have guitar stuff, so. Next. Um, so I use the Fender P bass. Um, its name is Steve the Guitar Junior. <laughs> <laughs> junior? What the yeah. <clears throat> Where's dad? So, <laughs> so I got a red one, but and that was Steve the Guitar. Then I, I got buyers or more, so I returned it and I got a different one. So that's Steve the Guitar Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you have a backstory. <laughs> um, so it's named Steve after Steve Harris from oh, Iron Maiden. Nice and pull. guitar because I can call it a guitar now. <laughs> like I, I used to play oboe and I named it clarinet, so I could just call it a clarinet. <laughs> that's right, you did play oboe. Because I always play, <laughs> I always play instruments that look like other instruments. So. <laughs> this is my thing. <laughs> You're starting playing drums on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, for me... Well, what are you rocking on a show? I rock my metallic blue PRS that I have. That's like my go-to show yeah. guitar. I, As a guitarist, you know, I can never have one too many. Right. Because I have maybe like... Three, two more. I don't, I'm not that rich, but I have like an Ibanez that I like, you know, spray painted to make it look cool. DIY, baby, yes. Yeah. And then, you know, I brought it to work one day. I used to work with kids. And then, you know, kind of a big mistake there because then they messed up the knobs, like the tuning, not oh, tuning man, knobs, yeah. the volume knob and like tune, tone knobs. That's <clears> what it is. So then I think like two are broken, one is like popped off. I don't. I can't use it anyway. The strings are so old too. I was like, right. I'm not even gonna touch it. <laughs> so is that basically you don't do? You, do you play with it, or is it basically just waiting for you to smash? It's waiting for me to fix it up. I was gonna say, not wait till you have a do a music video where you have an excuse to smash the guitar. Exactly. And there right. you go. Or or light it on fire like and then, George Michael. And then I also got a pink. I got a pink uh, Floyd Rose Jackson, and I hate a Floyd Rose. I wish I had knew, known earlier that. They were so hard to like take care of. They, there's a reason for Floyd Rose, and yeah, they they definitely require you to have that um, level of, of maintenance. Yeah, couldn't yeah. be me. I'm bare minimum. Yep. That's why I rock my PRS because it's cool. It's the body shape I like, and it's 
It's for the lazy guitarist. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I have, like, <clears throat> I have a couple of pedals, but I think just for the sake that the songs that we write mm-hmm. and uh, what we do at shows, just run the, a tuner pedal and a distortion pedal. And then I also have a noise suppressor a pedal and a, uh, I forgot what it's called, phaser. I think, like, the Eddie Van Halen phaser pedal. Wow. Yep. Yep. But I don't use those. I don't. Again, no need. No need at this with the songs that we write yet. Yes. Well, that leads me to uh, my next question, which is: you, you have your band has a lot of musical influences. Uh, notably, someone is a metalhead and a Swifty. Yeah. But does that work its way into the, your music when you're writing, or, or are you basically the songwriter and you say, "All right, now figure out your parts." Uh, how it typically goes is like. I'll write out the whole demo for the song. I'll write out the drum parts. I can't play drums, but I can program them in. It's the Jared band. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so I'll just, like, write out the whole, like, song, basically, and I'll show it to them. I leave out, like, parts. For one, I'm sometimes lazy. Right. But other times it's like, well, I know they can think of something, like, add their own taste to it. Right. Like... Oh, you you gotta have them bounce off, bounce stuff off yeah, that you didn't come up with, because it, otherwise it is just me then. Like it is, everything sounds like you, and you can trust me when I say this. As someone who recorded an album all by himself, uh, everything starts sounding real similar if you're not careful. Yeah, and um, again, like I kind of just leave those open spots for them, or I'll we'll go into practice. I'll show them the song. And I'm like, Hog, oh, this is like the part where you gotta like. Flip the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you play some like open notes, play some notes, like make make a cool riff. Right. Or I'll like, you know, this is where you pop off, like go on the drums, like go on. Stick flip. And I tell Charlene, like, this is a bass riff, like here, have like. <laughs> you can play these two notes. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's like two notes for you to play. Play the root notes. There's an old joke. Stop me if you've heard this one. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So, no, uh, the crowd, or the, the place is packed, okay? Band is, is rocking the place. There's uh, agents in the back of the room. They're going to get signed. You know, they're, this is like, great night. And the whole time, the singer's thinking, this is awesome. I'm going to, like, get, you know, groupies and do all the drugs. And the guitarist's thinking, I'm going to, you know, have a signature line of guitars and put on workshops and be a guitar god. And the drummer's thinking, I can buy all the gear I want. And the bass player's going, E, A, D, G. That's pretty good joke. Yeah, I feel okay. like maybe I have heard it, but you know, it's about telling the story. It's about sending a message. Oh, I'm just joshing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then again for songwriting, like I pull my influences uh, from All Time Low, Fall Out Boy, Early Panic at the Disco, um, Paramore, kind of those like mid late 2000s type of bands. I think like recently, like the song I just wrote for us, I feel like definitely has more of a metal influence towards the end or i don't know is there well, what kind of metal because there's so many <laughs> subgenres. Shoot, i'm not gonna know it's new... heavy it's heavier than what i normally write right is, what I, is what i'll say new metal <laughs> right on um maybe cool. some definitely taylor swift inspired justin bieber yes kesha <laughs> all of a sudden your entire band starts going da 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 yes <laughs> that's why all the flips are for <laughs> we're jumping hate around. Gonna hate, hate. anyway don't you break kelsey's heart anyway <laughs> So, <laughs> a couple more questions, then we're going to see them perform. Uh, see them perform upstairs in room six. Definitely check out the uh, links down in the description for their social media, so you can find out where where they're playing, catch you know when they drop music, etc. Yes. Um, Speaking of music, we have an EP coming soon. Ooh. Well, we're going to go record it. That but, would help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Generally, that's how it works. We we have it titled though, and it's called um, Isle of Lost Memories. Isle like spelled I S L E. Not like Isle, like at a store. <laughs> it's short for island. Maybe you should make it Isle. Make it at a store. Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Just stand it up. Stand it up on the box. Just stand it up. I think it's they... a flat bottom. You can do it. Oh, oh, uh, like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anytime you brought it up earlier, like, or how he brought it up, or he was like, I messed up, and then I just kind of look at Jared, and I'm like, I know when he messes up too, and I look at him, and we just like laugh at each other, but like, even during the show, we were like, okay, yeah, like that happened, but it's so funny. Right on. <laughs> even if I mess up too, like I'll look at him, and I'm like, well, we're just gonna keep playing. 
Okay, so a couple more questions and then we'll get upstairs. <laughs> and then we'll catch you in the outro. But, um, so we've talked about favorite, favorite show memories. Is there a dream gig that you're like is on the radar for you? Some show you'd love to be part of? I think uh, locally here in Las oh, Vegas, whatever. I think my dream gig would be playing with the White Noise, Dollheads, mm. Pure Sport, Elevated Underground at the space. The space is awesome. If you haven't been, it's all ages amazingly. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I was in there, and when you walk in, there's a bar. But you see like a 10-year-old moshing. It's yeah. amazing. Um, the Dollhead's been on the channel. Nice. So amazing. So amazing. And um, they deserve all the accolades that they get at being their 15 and 16 and their siblings. I think the first things I said to them was that they remind me of the Naked Brothers band. <laughs> and they're like, huh? They're, yeah. I'm sure they were like, who is this guy? Because we met at like Life is Beautiful Battle of the Bands and I like we competed right. against each other. And you know. If I were you. Yeah. And you want to make that show happen, reach out to those acts and the oh, promoters talk, that have booked you in the past and I, say, I want to do this. Oh, yeah. I definitely talk to them like every now and then. Because I think it would be awesome. And, um, I think I, it's just a matter of timing. Yeah. But all those acts that you mentioned, I want to get on the channel. I mean, Dollheads have been on. Yeah. And you've been on. But I would, I would love to get you all on the channel. Um, and I think that would be an amazing show. So, anybody else? I think they. Um, I really hope to someday start touring. I want to like meet places and see other places, not just here in America, but like in other countries too. Yeah, like Antarctica. Yeah, I want, to, <laughs> I want a boss with the penguins. I want to see make penguins. Bro, <laughs> Bro, penguins are so cool. I'm I'm happy to say that uh, I there's a, a Room Six alumni. The very first Christmas episode I did, uh, Madzilla, which is technical metal. Just you're the whole time you're like, what am I doing with my instrument? They're amazing. They're I think they just finished playing Sao Paulo. They're they're like Chile. They're they're going all over South America. Nice. And they are like. The pictures they're showing, they're doing the selfie on stage with the crowd. Oh, nice. You can't see where the uh, the crowd ends. It's <laughs> like the kind of shows we all want. Oh, yeah, for you sure. Yeah, where you got to like wait for them to quiet down before you can make the metal. <laughs> I mean, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I want to different stuff. But locally, if I were the hard to perform here, uh, T-Mobile Arena. Yeah, oh. That's a good choice. I, I have yet to be there. Make it up. Let's the, make it up. The yeah. chairs at the top kind of suck. Well, that's why they're at the top. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Hawk, Shaw, dream shows. Um, I mean, if it's if we're going with dreams, then let's do something that's impossible. Um, Taylor Swift and Iron Maiden opening up for us. Yes. No. No. Opening for you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a dream. I was gonna say opening for them, but okay. No. no I see you. And you um, know what? I support that dream. First of all, that. make it happen. I would love to see the crowds and whether they would just <laughs> immediately start fighting or whether they would just be like, I accept you and I accept you. I feel like the metalheads would be more accepting. I feel you like want to believe that. Swifties, metalheads, and K pop fans are all like really involved in their fan Unless bases. you say bad things about them, their, their, their favorite musician. <laughs> then <laughs> there's no hell like a Swiftie yet scorned. True. They they will mobilize and you will regret it. Our I'm merch is based off our, bur uh, our merch is based off of the Taylor Swift uh, bracelets, <laughs> basically They're more or less. Based off of us. Yeah, nice. based off of us, based off Taylor Swift. She I, copied I, I us. was going to ask you whether you had like um, a proper official, maybe you're right, logo and also a mascot. But speaking of Iron Maiden, we got Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Not to, not enough bands have like. A band mascot that just shows up on their their artwork and stuff. I don't think, at least for me, I never really thought about like, and I'm like the visionary, uh. <laughs> but like I didn't really think of like a mascot per se. I've thought of a logo, and that's kind of a we have technically two like on our Instagram like profile pic is like one of them, and then if you, uh, I think if you scroll down, you can see like our other logo, and it's kind of like a watermelon on a pumpkin face type of thing yeah i was gonna ask you about that that's that's the logo the heck yeah <laughs> so you could say it's like a pumpkin face but you know it came off of a watermelon called a jacko melon right on that was the inspiration for it because we were thinking of logos and then i was like we just gotta kiss it keep it simple stupid watermelon <laughs> jacko hi <laughs> uh hawk um. dream show I totally forgot that was the question we were even answering. <laughs> you said you just said like something really small. I was like, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I didn't know if you meant like locally or like big. 
I think big, you know, I probably want to play on play on the moon. Yeah. Maybe Mars. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to play there. There's no atmosphere. Hey! Yeah, so they'll be there. with us. You know, that's why they pay the tickets to travel there. Moon tickets. <laughs> Man, I, I, just any festival, I guess. I don't even care. I'm not, I'm not that, uh... That's why I write the songs. Word. What's the word? <laughs> I'm not that picky. There you go. Ah, okay, okay. So he's he he just wants to be like you know he's just, fifty and still rocking. Yeah. yeah. Right on. He's doing his job. He's doing his job. <laughs> he holds it down. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so we're last question. You made it. Yes. Yes. Stick around. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Stop it. No touchy. Uh, so stick around. Thing. We're going to see Jared and Hawk upstairs doing a little acoustic uh, version of their music. And uh, then we'll be back here for the outro with the gang. But l- last question. And you definitely haven't heard this before. Ooh. Well, yeah. Oh, you have. I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, I was genuinely like... Thinking. Someone may or may not have forgotten to hit record last time. So <laughs> shout out for continuity. Hey, so... Yeah. <clears throat> Let's pretend we're talking a little you. Circling back to that earliest musical influence. What is one thing you wish you could go back in time and say, hey, you need to know about this? And don't say change your strings. And it doesn't have to be a negative thing, it, but something that you're like, you, know, you need to know about this. Teach the children's. Okay. One, two, three, not it. Life is depressing. <laughs> uh... It doesn't have to be negative, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would tell my younger self, because when I was little, I would jump, um, well, as a drummer, you know, before you actually become an official drummer, you just jump, like, drum. You're just a fake drummer. Well, <laughs> just Not jump from drummer. different instruments. Yeah. My first ever instrument was, like, the clarinet, and then I hmm. went to the guitar, and then I went to the piano. It's maybe with all those three. I can play hot cross bun, but who cares? Um. But it makes you a better drummer, because you're a more well-rounded musician. Exactly. Boom. So I'll tell myself in any way possible, join anything that involves drumming, whether it be like a drum line or like a little musician band, jazz band, doesn't matter. Just get some history in drumming. It'll, it'll help you as a, become more of a skillful drummer. And the second thing, don't get pissed off when a drumstick breaks. <laughs> <laughs> or when you can't even hit a beat on time. I couldn't hit the one and two and three and four my first try, and that's when I got pissed off and I just broke my first drum. Damn. Sticks. <laughs> the first time I played drums, broke them right then there. Damn. Wow. You, you good now? You, yeah. You, you okay? Yeah, I can play. I could. I could. Um, nowadays, I can play the drums and break a stick at the same time. Hey, <laughs> efficiency. Mm-hmm. Yes. So yeah, life is depressing anyway. All right. Uh, next one, three, not it. I was gonna do rock paper scissors. <laughs> Why is it okay? What's the matter? Sucker, I, I took your game and you just, <laughs> congratulations, you just got played. I did get played. <laughs> you just lost the game. Oh, man, I almost lost that other game. Mm. It's in the corner of my eye. You lost the game. You know what game. Anyway. The game. And, yeah, okay. Uh, earliest, what? What was the question? <laughs> you, little, what? No. <laughs> um, I think I would tell like my younger self, like, because I feel like music has definitely been a part of my life for like since I was a kid because my family had done it. Like my aunt's a DJ here in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, my dad's a DJ not here in Vegas. But boots I don't. Pets, boots, pets. I might be throwing some shade. Maybe I have parental issues. I'm gonna say he's not that good a <laughs> DJ. Ooh, shots fired. Shots fired. I don't know. Like I haven't seen him DJ. So who am I to say? Are, and if are, I did, I was like, Do you know how to DJ? No. Well, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Put some respect on his name. I'm just kidding. True. Well, that's why I'm the musician. So, so what would you tell a little you that you need to know? Um, definitely, like, start going to school for it. Like, take specific classes. In ter- mm-hmm. Like, maybe music theory. It's not something, like, you need to know for music, but it helps. School of Rock. Yo, I love Jack Black. No, I mean the physical School of Rock that they have here. <laughs> no, Jack Black. They yes, if you can go to yeah, school and be taught by Jack Black how to rock, <laughs> by all means, do that. Yeah, no, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, like the actual school of rock. 
But um, yeah, like maybe like even through high school and stuff, uh, I always thought like, oh, I should like join my friends in like music class or like drum line or something like that. And I never did. And I think just that's just because I just was going through the motions of high school. Right. I just wanted to like do my classes and get out. But Don't then, we all? <laughs> then I got to like out of high school, and then I was like fell in love with guitar. I was like, dang, I should have done this earlier. I would have been so much better. <laughs> yeah. Especially singing, because uh, I don't think I can sing. People tell me I can sing, and who am I to deny them? Unless so, you're mute, you can sing. The question is, can you sing in a way that makes you happy? Yeah, I think I can. Screw everybody else. If you're happy with the result, and unfortunately, many a songwriter is never happy with what they put out. Oh, yeah. I'm you old. just learn to accept the like, compromise. Yeah. That's why, uh, um, what is it? I asked them, I was like, guys, I'm the singer? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, Look, okay. I'll tell you a secret. As someone who has photographed many a show and been in more than one band, people want to see you having fun on stage and want to see you believing what, in what you're doing. If, if you're constantly like, you know, how's everybody doing? Right? How's it sound out there? Oh, yeah. Eventually, you're, they're going to tell you <laughs> what they really feel. Oh, and, yeah. But... No, I always, I always enjoy uh, bands that are, you can see they're having fun, and they are, th they are playing music for them as well as for the, the, the crowd. Um, and if, if you're just constantly worried, like, does it sound popular? Does it sound, you know, good? Whatever good is. Yeah, right. Then it's just going to um, hurt your craft. Yeah. That's what, how you were saying, like, playing for us and right. for the crowd, too. It's like, when we do our shows... Uh, again, how, like, we do flips and tricks and whatever. Like, I like going out, like, at the end of the day, end of the show. Mm -hmm. Like, we left a smile on their face, at least. Yeah. Not really caring, like, whether I did sound good or whatever, but... I should piggyback on what I just said, though. Yeah. Lessons are important, or at the very least, practice is hugely important. And practice at home, not when you get to rehearsal. Rehearsal True. is when you are working out the tops, and the ins and the outs, and the beginnings and the ends, and, and all that, but... You're like you know your part. Yeah. Know your parts at home. Practice at home. And if you can take lessons and have someone else tell you, okay, no, 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 that doesn't sound good. This you need to try this, and you're like, oh wow, it is better. Yeah. Then it's money well spent. Like I, I definitely had had like vocal lessons before, so mm -hmm. I kind of like understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. And like even like before shows, me and Hawk like uh we do vocal warm ups like maybe ten, twenty minutes before we go mm -hmm. on. Just to make sure, like, we're good and sounding clean. I don't think I really need them. Uh, well, I definitely need them. <laughs> don't want my voice to give out. I've had had that happen, like, what? during a show. Oh, yeah. My voice is just, like, stop producing noise. You know who's never had their voice go out in the middle of the show? Um, Beyonce? Yeah. SpongeBob? Taylor Swift. Oh. I'll say Beyonce. Actually, she probably has. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, who's left? You two are left, I think? Rock, paper, scissors right now. <laughs> One, two, three, throw. That was... Yeah, ready? <laughs> that was, that was late. One, and two, three, throw. You win, wait. so... Uh, <laughs> uh, wait. Okay. Oh, just okay. go already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what, we, what we would tell ourselves as a kid? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so I always, like, had anxiety as a kid, so I probably just tell myself to just, like, do everything that I wanted to do. Um, I feel like it held me back a lot, like... I'd want to do something, but I'd be afraid like I wouldn't be good enough, or like I don't know. I just like to take that first step, and like to push yourself to get out there, and then it just gets so much easier after that. It's just that first step that's the hardest, but like once you can do that, it's so much better. Wise words. Mm. All right, Hawk. Kaka. Um, Talk to the little 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 tiny uh, that's the obvious. chickling you. <laughs> Chicklet. Um, so listen, little hawk, you're going to need to know there's going to be this homecoming game. <laughs> Inside joke. Anyway, go ahead. Um, kind of the same thing. Uh, only thing, or except like a specific way, I guess, to sort of force yourself to do stuff because I can never force myself to do anything. Um, it's just like set yourself up to be forced to do that thing. <laughs> um, if that makes sense, it's like... Like, create <laughs> dates where you have to do this thing, or like set up meetings with people on this specific time 
so you have to go to that thing and you're kind of forced to do it because it does get easier after you've done it before um scheduling yep and that's that's how i live every single day with with the room six with youtube is like I have I invite you over to my home, which forces me to clean the kitchen, which forces me to be ready with notes, or which forces me to, you know, to to, to make the content. Because well, there's no point in me doing this if I don't give you. Okay, here's the video. Here we're done. Um, Operations. Yeah, and it's be- now that it, Room Six has grown into a thing where people are reaching out to me that I don't even know. <laughs> nice. Yes, that's that's kind of a big like. Oh, it's a thing now. I have a lot of people to disappoint. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, I guess it's time to keep doing what I'm doing, but definitely buy a calendar or something. Mm. You know, my phone's calendar is so full because I'm constantly saying, "Hi, Bixby." Set reminder for you know that. And, and, Bixby. <laughs> yeah, set setting. Well, I, I'm on my phone, but but setting reminders so that something yells at you is a key. <laughs> ah, yes. Go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Of course. Of course. We're going to check out Jared and Hawk upstairs. And uh, I guess temporarily we'll say goodbye. And we'll catch you in the outro. Temporarily say goodbye. Later, Gators. Bye. Hello, where maybe you're right. I'm Jared Summers. I'm Hawk. This is a uh, song called Fairy Tales. When the stars in the night begin to fade Will you remember when I said No one knows how the story's going to end Cause fairy tales don't play pretend It's only you and me against the world So tell me girl Are you doing well in these situations? Do you need me to be part of the solution? Tell me what you need I can be anything Are you the princess that I've read about? Glass slippers dress are you happy in the castle that you talked about or a damsel in distress when the stars in the night begin to fade will you remember when i said no one knows how the story's going to end because fairy tales don't play pretend and i'm just hoping hoping you know i miss by my side, and a story books don't lie. Then I'll be the prince that'll save you tonight. In this story that's in motion, we play to our characters' emotions. But worth it. Cause your lullaby puts me to sleep. Cause the sound of your voice is so serene. For every Are you the princess that I read about? Glass slippers, slim black dress. Are you happy in the castle that you talked about? Or a damsel in distress when the stars in the night begin to fade? Will you remember when I said no one knows how the story's going to end? Cause fairy tales don't play pretend. And I'm just hoping, hoping you know I miss you by my side That a story books don't lie Then I'll be the prince that'll save you tonight
It's my final chapter, my finest hour. I see you locked inside that tower. If saving you can rescue me, that'd be my happily ever. When the stars in the night begin to fade, will you remember when I said no one knows how the story's going to end? These fairy tales don't play. Fairy tales don't play pretend So we'll just have to write our stories and I can save you in my arms I can keep you safe from harm And I'm just hoping Hoping you know I miss you by my side And a story books don't mind Then I'll be the prince that'll save you tonight Hi, or maybe you're right, it's just me, Jared Summers, and this is our song, Lost Paradise. I'll be the first to admit we were doomed from the start I've heard the rumors of you, how your life fell apart I never knew that it was hurting you the way it's killing me Once we were through, our last common interest is feeling different our hearts sacrifice to a lost paradise My eyes deceive me from what I've heard Cause your eyes stare through me like you're made of stone And I can see you in my dreams But my dreams aren't the same as letting you go I never knew that it was hurting you The way it's killing me Once we were through Our last common interest Is feeling different Our hearts sacrifice To a lost paradise I should forget the memories But it's not that easy When my friends tell me You weren't for me, and I've heard you've changed, and I'm still the same. Gone our separate ways to find a better place. I never knew that it was hurting you The way it's killing me Once we were through Our last common interest is feeling different Our hearts sacrifice to a lost paradise If I only knew you shared the same pain too Could we have changed our lives? Hi, where maybe you're right. I'm Jared Summers. I'm Hawk. And this is our song, Our Moment, Dreams Can Come to Life.
go-getters, the go-getters, the ones who will knock you off your feet. New idols, your rock models, we've come to make a scene. We'll leave them wanting more, we'll leave them dead on the dance floor. And when the party's over, we'll hit rewind and start again. Pass you by. You can see the doors are open. One step and you'll never be the same. Why live in reality when your dreams can come to life? Let's do this one more time. Speak louder. Used up phrases I know you've heard A dumb platter, a love letter For everyone who knew the words So get down to this breakdown Make this feeling last forever And when the party's over We'll hit rewind and start again Cause this is our moment Don't let it pass you Another step I want to thank Maybe You're Right for coming on the channel. It was a great interview, an awesome performance. Definitely, definitely check out their social media links down in the description. <laughs> the clapping. And if you can make it to Cemetery Pulp on December 8th, swing by the show. Hopefully, I'll be there too. Oh, it'll be Mosh. really funny. I better see some moshes in that crowd. I, yeah, that's right. Or else I will personally Bring your get 10 year olds. <laughs> I will get up and leave. Hawk will make a surprise costume. But don't for, you'll break your drumstick first. You need three you people to get knocked I'll out I'll break at least. my drumstick first and then I'll get up. Anyways, the outro. Come on. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. Click over there. and Don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, right past his head is where you can check out my stuff. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, gang. I love you. Bye. <laughs> I mean, are you okay with that? Essentially. <laughs> All right. Ba da ba ba da ba.